The fourth Ashes test is about to begin at Trent Bridge, with England holding a 2-1 series lead. With me to preview the test is Ivy Times sports editor Nick Housen. Nick, we'll look at England first. The players, their confidence must be so high after that. Very impressive, especially with the ball uh, eight-wicket win over Australia back at Edgbaston. But any confidence the team holds must be tempered by the devastating loss of star bowler James Anderson. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, very much. It was very much a, a little bit of a sombre mood actually on on that on that third morning uh, when England uh, were chasing those wickets to and Australia were trying to set a, something of a score and you know, learnt quite early on that James Anderson wasn't going to play in this foot in, in the upcoming fourth test and that's you know, really difficult, particularly as the sort of the victory had been secured and at that point England had, you know are in sight of of, uh, of regaining the Ashes. Uh, and, you know, it's very difficult from that point of view. Obviously England now got to have find fill that void. You know, the hope is that Mark Wood is going to come through. He's very much the next cab off the rank. And, you know, played in the first two Test matches, injured for the third. Um, it's, you know, it's, I think it's only right that he that he should come in if fit. Um, with that ankle that, that ankle injury that he that he picked up and missed the third match. If not, obviously we look at someone like Liam Plunkett, uh, Mark Footett as well, who, albeit a debutant, would offer a, you know left arm seam. Um, so that would that would uh, offer a sort of a different avenue of attack and. At this point in the series, you know, I think sometimes you are looking for a bit of bit of variation. You've had three tests now, and the Australian batsmen, all bit they've they've been a bit flailing against England bowlers. Um, they would have been able to, you know, without Anderson there, they'll, they'll use this perhaps as an opportunity to take them on a little bit more, and they'll perhaps get a little bit more settled. Bringing someone like Footed in, say left armour, would perhaps change a bit of that. But we'll, we'll wait to be see. I would I would think that Wood certainly will be the um, the first choice, and we'll, and we'll go from there. I'm going over to the other side of Australia. They know now that they just cannot afford to, to lose again. They want to retain the Ashes and Captain Michael Clarke has been extremely candid about his poor performance so far. This has got to be make or break time for him now. Absolutely. I mean, he's been very, very as you say, he's been very strong about, about his, about not only his form, uh, but also his international future as well. I think a lot of people have, have essentially written him off, really. He's been uh, heavily criticised. Only 93 runs in, in the six innings he's in this series and he has been a little bit he said himself he's been a little bit of a passenger in this series um, and he really needs to step up it's not helped when he makes influential decisions at the toss and and it you know influences the game um, you know putting you know go put you know batting first at edge baston and you know England, they were bowled out before the end of the day and th you know, 37 overs so that's a, that's a real problem when that's combined with bad batting form it's not helped when, when, when we hear reports of, of the team being uh, uh, disen, disenchanted with, with selection. You know, Brad Haddon missing out on that third test despite those personal problems having seen me sort of um, passed. Um, and Peter Neville being retained, I actually think that was correct, it was actually a correct decision. But when you're hearing things like that, it's not necessarily great. So the dynamic in the Australian dressing room at the moment is far from ideal. Um, and as you say, they, they've got, there's no margin for error now going to the Trent Bridge test where, you, again, you think there's going to be a result. And what are the predictions then for the match? Because at Edgebaston, we pretty much got everything we wanted. It wasn't decided by the toss. Mm. There was something there for bat and ball. Are we going to get more of the same up at Trent Bridge? I think, yes, absolutely. And in short, I think we're certainly going to get a result. Um, the Trent Bridge has changed some, somewhat in the last sort of last year or so. It's far more if assist swing and, and seam movement far more than that it used to and for, so from that point of view it, it lends itself to a, a, a three or four day test again um, with certainly a result with certainly a result as well even if there's a little bit of weather around as predicted you know let's not forget australia you know australia saw the number two test team in the world i think they still go into this test match as, as the favorites to, as to, to win it and i still think they're the favorites in the series even if england do lead 2-1 and having claimed two pretty emphatic victories and England without James Anderson, I think, it, if it had been another Test match, had we been looking at, I don't know, at Cardiff or the Oval or something like that, the, the influence of Anderson being of being missed wouldn't have been as significant. But I think coming into a, you say he's the most successful Test bowler ever at Trent Bridge. To, to, you know, without him, you know, England, I say they, they they lost all their trump card there really. So that's a real blow for me. Australia going as favourites for this Test, despite their problems, they showed at Lords they can they can make a comeback. And I see no reason why we can't see the same with Trent Bridge. Well, for all our coverage of this Ashes series, go to our website, ibtimes.co.uk.